right, so hi everybody. I'm just gonna wait on the title screen for a while for people to join in because uh, because I'm starting a little bit early just to get things set up. So. a little little bit before we get properly started. Um, this game is Lenny Lushjox in Space. It was created by the developer E-Zone. Uh, my name is Anthony, although you may know me as Tommy Shadow because that's sort of my online persona. Uh, and I am not from E-Zone, but I worked together with E-Zone uh, to bring this version of the game to Steam. Uh, and the reason why we brought this game to Steam, it's partially because uh, we wanted to make some quality of life improvements. Like for example, you will notice the game is running in full screen and it's actually scaled up to my screen size. So it's in beautiful HD. Um, but also because uh, this game has been put on Steam in order to raise money for the third game in the Lenny Lushjox series, uh, Lenny Lushjox 3. So if that's exciting to you, then you should uh, definitely buy this game. Uh, I can't see chat yet because I'm just getting set up. So hopefully my volume is good. Uh, I did test it before going on stream to try and make sure that you could hear me. Uh, and I do want it to be that my voice is a little bit loud because this, this game can get pretty loud at times. So I want to make sure that you can hear me at all times. So now I'm logged in, now I can see chat. Um, is there anyone in chat? Say hi. So yeah, uh, this uh, stream is scheduled to start properly at, at uh, 4 p.m. So I'm not going to actually like start the game until then. So, so here's the deal with this game. Um, this game is a puzzle adventure, and the thing about puzzle adventures is that if you already know all the puzzle solutions, then they aren't they aren't as fun, right? Like you can't uh, you know get like your first time experience with them if you already know all the solutions. So, if I were to just do like an ordinary gameplay walkthrough where I just solve all the puzzles. It would kind of be ruining the game for anyone who has uh, like played it before, uh, and I I don't want to do that. I want to give like a nice preview of what this game is like for anybody who uh, just wants an idea of if this is the type of game they'd like to buy. So I'm not going to do that, right? What I'm going to do is I'm just kind of gonna wander around and I'm going to show some some gameplay. Uh, but I'm not, I'm intentionally not going to solve any of the actual puzzles uh, because that would be, you know, giving away the solutions. Uh, so I'm just going to show what the game is like, but without actually solving it. Um, and then at the very end of the stream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, the same stuff that's in the free demo of the game. And at that point, I'll give a spoiler warning. So basically, right, if you're already sold on the game at that point, then you can add it to your wish list. The game comes out on November 2nd. Um, if you uh, want to play the, the free demo for yourself, it's on Steam right now. You can download it and try it out for yourself and get hands on. Or if you, if you just want to see me play it, uh, then you can watch me play it, right? So you have you have three options basically at that point is, is to you know uh, wishlist the game tune out or try the free demo yourself 
or um, just watch me play, right? But it will be, you know, getting into spoiler territory, and I'll save that for the very end of the stream. I'll give a warning before I do that, right? But just for now, um, there's basically going to be a, a gradient of, of spoileriness, right? Like, just for now, I'm going to just show stuff that every player, you know, uh, is, is going to see, or perhaps, you know, even some little Easter eggs that some players have possibly not seen, right? But I'm going to start with stuff that isn't spoilery and not reveal solutions. And then as we get closer to the end of the stream, I'll give like a spoiler warning for any new players. So that's how this is going to go. Still not certain that I'm that what I'm doing is actually showing up on the Steam store page. I'm just double checking. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Okay, we're we're live on there. So yeah, the stream starts at uh, at four. So that's right about now. I should announce this in the E-Zone Discord, actually. Let me go do that. That would help. <laughs> and I don't have a I don't have a multi-monitor setup, so I'm just uh, I'm just doing all of this other stuff on my phone. I feel like the only person in the world who doesn't have a multi-monitor setup. Well, okay, I don't feel like I even need a multi-monitor setup. This is basically the only scenario that I can see where I would need one. Because um, I don't stream very often, but this is a pretty special occasion. I literally don't have enough room on my desk for multi-monitors, even if I wanted to have a multi-monitor setup, which I don't. Like I said, this is basically the only scenario where I feel like I would need one to be able to re-chat at the same time. Uh, so, okay, so I posted it on the Discord. So hopefully people will start rolling in. Okay, so uh, once again, Hello, uh, this, this game is Lenny Lushtox in Space. It was created by the developer Ezone. Uh, my name is Anthony, although you may know me as Tommy Shadow because that's kind of my online persona. And I am not from Ezone, but I worked together with Ezone in order to bring this game to Steam. And the main reason that we are bringing this game to Steam is to raise money. Uh, for Lenny Lushjox 3, the, the third game in the Lenny Lushjox series. So if that's exciting to you, you should definitely buy this, this game. Uh, we've also added some nice quality of life features, like for example, the game now stretches to your screen size. Uh, the original game was a uh, very small resolution, by uh, even by retro standards. It was 400 by 300, which is tiny, uh, and on an HD screen, even more so. So, I felt like it was a, a pretty necessary feature to make the game scale up to your screen size for the Steam version. There's also some other additional niceties in this version of the game, but I will show those off when we get there. Like I said before, this is a puzzle adventure game. So, if I were to just do like an ordinary gameplay walkthrough where I show all the solutions, then that would kind of be giving the game away to anybody who hasn't tried it before. And what I want to do is just give like a nice preview of the game for anybody who hasn't seen it before. So, I'm going to be. I'm not going to be solving all the puzzles, right? I'm just kind of going to wander around and click on stuff and show what the gameplay is like, but I'm intentionally not going to solve any puzzles. Uh, 
so that you can still try it out yourself if you want, right? But this will just give you a taste of if this is the kind of game that you would like to buy. And at the very end of the stream, I will be solving uh, the same stuff that's in the free demo, and I will give a warning before I do that. So basically, at that point, uh, if you want to get hands-on and try the free demo, it's already on Steam. Uh, you can try it out right now if you want. Uh, or if you're already sold on the game, right, then you can you can add it to your wish list, and the game comes out on November second, and you can just tune out at that point, right? Or you can watch me watch me solve it right? if you just want to watch me play the game. Uh, but I'll give a warning before that happens, and I'll be starting with less spoilery stuff. Right? I'll be starting with stuff that uh, isn't solving puzzles in the game. And I'll also be talking about just some like Easter eggs and little details that may be missed on your first playthrough of this game. minutes in, so I'm going to go ahead and start a new game here. So I think people are starting to tune in. I still don't see anything in chat, so if you're saying stuff in chat, I can't see it. Uh, that might just be because I'm using it on my phone, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm going to hit the new game button now. So right off the bat, there's this uh, loading bar here, uh, and I think that most people just click into the game immediately because of how fast it loads. But I'm going to read this text scroll because it's, it's great. Lenny in space. He'll save the human race. The adventure continues. We last left our hero, Lenny Lushchox, at the completion of his previous mission. Lenny Walkabout and the puzzles of Pull Your Pants Up. Now Lenny has accepted a new mission. This one is the biggest yet, with nothing less than the fate of the entire human race resting on his skinny shoulders. Every second counts, so Lenny only has four hours to discover and complete his mission. Using your computer mouse, you must guide Lenny throughout his journey. As in Lenny Walkabout, you should explore everywhere. Don't be afraid to click. Hurry, time is running out. The whole human race is counting on you. Good luck, Lenny. Right, so something I should mention, because uh, I forgot to mention, is that this game is a sequel. You you don't really need to have played the first game in order to understand what's going on in this game, though. You can pretty much just start with this game if you want. In fact, I would recommend it, because this is the fan favorite, right? This is the preferred game uh, in the series of, I think, you know, vast majority of players. So I would start here, honestly, even though this is a sequel. Um, so if you hadn't clicked, you know, by now, uh, as an ordinary player, um, you know, because, like, <laughs> this is just a credit screen, right? So most players would have by now, because it loaded, you saw it loaded basically instantly. Um, so I think most people just play, they just click to the game, they skip this, uh, this whole text scroll here. Um, but I love this bit where it says it's filmed on location. Uh, in outer space, and also inside Jamie's power Mac. And this is something that I guarantee you there are players that haven't seen. Uh, if the game hasn't loaded by now, you've lost your internet connection, it's time to upgrade to 56k. You didn't see the button at the top of the screen. You like watching scrolling text. You passed out due to anticipation. You're busy plugging in your headphones to enhance the audio experience of the game. You've gone to turn off the lights and close the curtains to enhance the visual experience of the game. You've gone to get a snack because you know you're in for a long, wild trip. You've gone to gather the whole family to put the game together, or you've gone to put a Do Not Disturb, I'm playing the long-awaited Lenny Lushchok's internet game sequel sign on your door. Funny enough, I was actually going to make that sign, uh, but as it turns out, I have the house to myself as I'm recording this, so it, it wasn't necessary. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go silent now because there's an intro cutscene here, so uh, I'll see you after the cutscene. We last left our hero, Lenny Lushox, as he entered the secret minefield door. Ah, uh, Lenny, I knew you'd make it. 
Who are you anyway? No time for that now. On to your next mission. Here goes nothing. Who are you anyway? Allow me to introduce myself. You're me! No, I'm your great, 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 grandson. Leroy Loose Jocks. What? The world needs your help, Lenny. Why me? You solve the puzzles of pull your pants up. You can do anything. Uh, what's my mission now? This. <laughs> Attention all Earthlings. I am Prime Minister Squeagle Quigley, ruler of the planet Slugeen, lord of the 20 billion Sluggies who live there. However, our sun is dying, and our galaxy is about to be thrown into an infinite and terminal darkness. There is only one solution, to detonate a neighboring galaxy with such force that the resulting explosion will burn bright enough to light our galaxy forever. Your galaxy is the closest, so we've planted bombs on each of your nine planets. And in just over four hours, boom, bye-bye Earthlings. Even if you find the bombs, good luck disarming them. Just to taunt you, the first bomb has been planted right under your nose. In the desolate outback town of Pull Your Pants Up. But you must disarm all of the other bombs before you can disarm the master bomb on Earth. So when do I start? Right now! Good luck, Lenny! All right, what a fantastic intro uh, to this game. And there's already a couple things that I want to, to comment on. Uh, so you might have noticed there's a there's a little gag where it shows today's current date as you step on the time machine, which is a, a great joke. Um, but it also kind of raises the question of uh, will it always show uh, today's current date? Because like this game is set in the year 2999, uh, and it's supposed to take about a thousand years later. Uh, so will it always show the current date? And in the original game, the answer is yes. It doesn't matter, you know, what year it is. There's no cap on it. It'll always show the current date. Um, but for this Steam release, you know, uh, it's on Steam. So who knows how far in the future people are going to be playing this game, right? So this was something that uh, was actually changed up for the Steam release. And I'm not going to say uh, exactly what the implementation is, just because I want to leave it a little bit of a mystery. 
Um, also, I love how you might have missed it, but I love how when you step on the time machine, uh, there's like uh, a tree and it's like it's small, right? And then when you step out of the time machine, it's it's grown up. Uh, and I love the implication that it took a thousand years to grow a, a coconut tree, <laughs> a palm tree. Um, <laughs> Um, I understand that it could be a different tree, and also that it's just there to show that that time has moved because, like, it's a room with with no windows, so it you can't really tell that that time is different. Although, to be honest, um, it doesn't seem like Earth has changed very much in the in the thousand years that we've been gone. So maybe windows wouldn't have helped anyway. Maybe maybe the tree is the only indication. Anyway, uh, let's. Uh, Let's start moving. So this, so this is how you play the game, right? Uh, you just click where you want the character to go to, and then they just go there. And uh, all that's over here is a golden statue. Uh, now, I'm sure at this point that there are people watching that are just like, please just, please just go into space. Like, show the part of the game where you go into space. And I'll get there, I'll get there, don't you worry. Um, but I have to talk about this golden statue. So... This golden statue is is interesting to the story of this game, because uh, like, if you think about it, we just we just time traveled a thousand years in the future, so we just got here, like we just arrived here, but people seem to already know that we were going to show up. So like, how does that work? Is it like? Yeah, I don't know. Is it is it is this really Lenny's first in, like trip trip to this time period, or or do how do people already know about him? Did he like go back to his time period and then uh, told the story of of how he saved the world, and then that got like passed down into legend, and so people just accepted it and they made him a statue? I I don't know, but it's interesting. Now the reason I bring this up is because. You might have noticed this uh, question mark icon in the top right. Uh, this was actually in the original game, and it's here too. And if you click on it, it opens up the hint map, hint guide, the hint uh, manual here. Um, so this is just on Ezone's website, and you can you can go to it. You know, anybody can go to this, if, even if you have don't have the game. Um, but you can just click that button to get to the hint guide. And obviously, I'm not going to show all the answers to the hints, because that would be lame. But I'll just show what the hint guide looks like, right? So you click this button, and you get this uh, lovely little interface. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it more clearly on stream. So this is the, this is the hint guide. And what I want to show is, if we go to Earth, right? Um, this is what it looks like. Now, obviously, I'm not going to show the answers to the questions because that would be, you know, a spoiler for new players. But I'll just show, like, a question that has, like, a non-answer, right? So, can I get back into the elevator shaft, right? The one we just came out of? It, no. The answer is just no. It's just not something you can do in the game, right? Um, but more to the point, there's this question here. What's with the giant gold Lenny Loosejock statue? And if you click on it, it's just... A blank page and this this is interesting because I've looked in like the Wayback Machine and this page has always been blank like it never had an actual answer to the question so naturally I'm a little bit I'm a little bit curious like what's up with that was I'm wondering if it was just a mistake when they made the hint guide or is it like an intentional thing that's meant to make you like think about think about it yourself and it's like a wink wink you know, kind of uh, making you think about what what is the lore implication of that statue. Anyway, that's that's all I wanted to show. But yeah, there's a there's a hint guide. <clears throat> so yeah, that's interesting. But uh, I'll move on from that. Let's show. Let's get to the the actual gameplay here. Um, I really like this style of uh, point-and-click adventure. There's a lot of games that do like the mist style, where you're in first person, 
and you click where you want to go and then you just kind of warp there. But I do like this where you uh, are in third person and you're clicking where you want the characters to go. I know it's not unique to this game, like uh, the, the Sierra games did this, but uh, I don't know, I, I don't see it as often. So this is the, uh, the aforementioned master bomb that uh, we are, it is our ultimate goal to disarm, and as you can see, we are on a time limit of four hours to disarm this bomb. Although, uh, well, I'll talk about the time limit more later, because it's interesting how that works. Um, and here's the spaceship to get into space. Let's go! Come on, Donga! Sire, our scanners have just shown that a small, one-man spacecraft has just left Earth. Pay it no attention. One man is of no possible threat to us or our plans. But Sire, we have reason to believe that the one man is none other than Lenny Loosechox. Lenny Loosechox? Oh no, where did he come from? We'll have to keep a close eye on him. This line is interesting, because it, it also suggests that there's been a previous encounter. Yes, sire, I'll keep you notified on his progress. So yeah, uh, the game definitely hints that Lenny has, like, encountered the Sluggies before, but it doesn't, like, outright say how. Uh, so this is the, um, this is Outer Space. Welcome to Outer Space. Yeah, you just fly around with the mouse, you point where, with the mouse where you want the ship to go, and then it's, it flies there. You can't go too far about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can fly around and click on a planet that you want to land on. Donga. I look, Donga! Venus! And, uh, you can go to the planets in whatever order you like. Just fly around outer space and click on one to land on. So, uh, Outer Wilds, eat your heart out. Venus! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's just a joke. Um, the games really have almost nothing in common, but I do find the comparison funny, because, like... Uh, you know, this game, it doesn't have any physics simulation. And there's also no instance where you have to, like, go to a planet to learn something, to go to a different planet. Um, but I just, uh, I just remember playing Outer Wilds and be like, hey, this is Lenny in, like Lenny in space, you can fly around, and you can click a planet to land on. Uh, so I just find the comparison funny. Um, but yeah, so here's this screen. Now, if you played the downloadable PC version of this game, uh, then you might never have seen this screen. But this game originally was a a web game, like you would have played it in in the browser. Um, so these screens are actually loading screens, and the idea is that the game is split up. So in order to not have this gigantic long loading time at the very start of the game, the, each planet is its own file, and when you went to a planet, it would download that file, and it would load uh, load that part of the game. So you can see that it loaded pretty much instantly, because this is a Steam release, and it, it doesn't have to download anything. Uh, and for that reason, in the original uh, PC version of this game, uh, this screen didn't exist, because, you know, it's not much of a loading screen. Uh, but I thought it was worthwhile keeping these screens in for the uh, text description of the, the planet here. Now these can be quite long because it's intended that you read this during loading, right? Uh, but it loaded practically, practically instantly, uh, you know, in the Steam release. So I imagine that a lot of players are just going to skip this, but I'm going to read it. I'm not going to read all of them, right? But I'm, I'm going to read this one and maybe a couple others, uh, just because I think a lot of players will miss it. So here it is. Uh, prepare yourself for a fantastic adventure on the exotic but dangerous Venus. Through constant volcanic activity, Venus has developed into an extremely beautiful planet full of color and mystery. Venus would have become the vacation spot of the galaxy if it weren't for the overpowering stench of the rotten egg-smelling sulfur air, the unpredictable volcanic eruptions, and the 
ferocious life forms that exist there. Many an adventurous tourist has blindly uh, attempted unsuccessfully to brave the local hazards. Due to these disastrous visits, the galactic government was forced to ban all travel to the planet. No one has visited the strange planet until now. The sluggies have planted a bomb somewhere within the lava-shaped environment of Venus. You must find it, disarm it, and then return to your ship. Let's just hope that an unexpected volcanic eruption doesn't cause a catastrophic, premature detonation of the bomb. I, I feel like that would be the least of my concerns in the events of an eruption, but okay. Uh, we're afraid to report that due to the explosive chemical makeup of Venus's atmosphere, your jetpack is inoperative. You're going to have to use whatever means available to navigate your way around this amazing, breathtaking, but unforgiving planet. Keep on your toes for this mission. You never know what you'll come across. The human race is counting on you, Lenny. Alright, let's land. Stay there, Donga. Alright, so this is the game. Like, this is the, the core of the game, basically. So you click around, and you can explore on the planet. And of course, our goal is to find the bomb on the planet. Uh, now, like I said, I'm not going to show the actual puzzle solution. So I'm just kind of going to, kind of going to wander around here and just like show off what the planet looks like. I'm going to do maybe a few things, but I'm not actually going to show like the full puzzle solutions. Just to like, you know, give you some ideas of what maybe you should be doing. Maybe you can come up with a theory of how you should solve it. And you can try it yourself when you have the game. Uh, so here we have a lava-filled room, and uh, we can't cross the lava. We can't click over there. There's a door over there, but I can't reach it, so I guess that's a dead end. But there is a fork in the road here. We can also go behind the cave, so let's go behind the cave. the ladder, so we can't go up there. We have a strange symbol, not quite sure what that means. And we have a lever. Should we pull it? Maybe that did something, so uh, we'll leave that. Why not? Right? It's gotta be the solution to pull all the levers. So yeah, this is the game, right? You just click to move around, and then you click on whatever you want Lenny to interact with, and uh, your goal is to find the bombs on the planets to try and disable them. I love the artwork in this game. Um, it's pixel art, but it's definitely got its own unique style to it. Something about pixel art and space just goes really well together. So we're back in this room, uh, and we can see now the door is open, but we still can't cross the lava. Uh, we still can't click over here. It's impossible to click over here. So. That's that, I guess. Don't really know how to solve this one. Um, now, when you're on the planet, you can actually click on this question mark icon, and this will bring up the planet status report. Um, and from this screen, you can actually choose to abort uh, the planet you're on. Of course, that won't solve the planet. Like, it won't uh, solve... Uh, it won't help you find the, the bomb at all, right? It'll just... It's just a quick way to leave. 
So if I click on this, it says uh, bomb will be reactivated, right? So you can't use this to win, right? But it is a quick way back. And now we're back in space. So yeah, that's a feature that I think uh, a lot of players don't use, but uh, you know, it's handy if you can't solve a puzzle and you want to quickly Hey, out. look, Donga. Eh. Alright, next I'm going to hey, Neptune. Look, Donga. Nice. I'm gonna head to my to Neptune because it's my personal favorite planet in this game. Hey, look, Donga. Jupiter. Actually, um, let me show something off on Jupiter. Jupiter! Uh, okay, so I'm not gonna read this one, right? I'm not gonna read all of them, but I wanna show something off on Jupiter. So this is Jupiter, and you'll notice there's nowhere to walk. So what you have to do is you have to use your jetpack like this. Wow, this game really is Outer Wilds. You have a jetpack. Uh, so yeah. Um, now you'll notice that the jetpack has a constantly playing jetpack sound. Um, but we can turn that off by pressing Control plus J. And now it's off. Now, it's possible if you've played this game before that you don't remember there being a jetpack sound. And that's because in the original release of this game, uh, there was a jetpack sound. And then people found it annoying, so Ezone got rid of it. Um, and then when Ezone got rid of it in future updates to the game, um, some people were annoyed because they liked the jetpack sound. So now there's this like divide of do you do you like the jetpack sound or is it annoying, <laughs> right? So in this version, it's a toggle. You can turn it on and off. Like I can turn it back on by pressing Control plus J, and it says the jetpack has been turned on, and now it's back on, right? Uh, so that's just it's a feat. That's a new feature that only exists in this version. Um, I'm gonna leave it off because I think most people, you know, they they probably remember the game with the sound effect off because it wasn't in the game for very long, right? They updated it soon after release to remove it because people found it annoying. Um, and I'm also, again, I'm not gonna show the solution to this planet because I don't want to show all the solutions, right? I just want this to be a nice, um, you know, preview for anybody who hasn't played the game before, if this is the type of game they enjoy. Um, so I'm just going to go back into space. Hey, Donga! Hey, look, Donga! Saturn! So now I'm going to go to Neptune. Uh, it's my personal favorite planet hey, in the look, game. Donga, you're right in. And I have a feeling it's it's Ezone's own favorite planet because it's it's the planet hey, that's in, look, Donga, Neptune. It's in it's the planet that's in the banner art for this game. So I'm guessing it's their favorite too. Neptune. Alright, prepare yourself for a nose-pinching adventure on stinky old Neptune. Back in the year 2405, it was discovered that the Earth's global warming problem was caused by the enormous quantity of methane gas in the atmosphere. The source of all that gas? Cows, of course. So, a plan was conceived to move all the cows to another planet. The nominated planet was Neptune. Neptune was a perfect choice, for its atmosphere was already predominantly methane anyway. What possible harm was adding more methane to the mix going to do? So the massive task of moving the cows was slowly carried out for the decade that followed. By late 2415, Neptune, Neptune was fully functional as the cow farm of the galaxy. Over the following century, Neptune's mutated atmosphere has not only created changes in the planet's environment, but also to the cows. The bovines had now transformed to large, wrinkled, purple, polka-dotted animals that give nothing but sour blue milk. What's more, their meat was disgustingly smelly and tough. So Neptune was quickly abandoned as a cow farm and was turned into a methane plant. The methane was bottled and shipped all over the galaxy as fuel for spacecraft. However, 500 years ago, methane was replaced by a cleaner and cheaper fuel called Berkelberg. So, the methane plant closed up, and Neptune has been ignored ever since. As far as we know, many mutated cows still exist on Neptune. 
No one has been brave enough to risk the stench of the planet to find out for sure. One thing we do know is that the Sluggies have used the old methane plant as a hideout for the bomb. Your mission is to find that bomb, disarm it, and return to your ship. It's a smelly job, but somebody's got to do it. Oh yes, due to the highly combustible chemical makeup of Neptune's atmosphere, your jetpack is inoperative. So, hold your nose, and keep your mind on your mission. Good luck, Lenny. So, as you might have guessed uh, by what I said earlier, that these were removed from the PC, the original PC release of the game, uh, none of these are strictly necessary to read to, like, know what to do in, in the puzzles of the game. Uh, like, it's, it's not a missed journal, right? These are just here for fun. Um, so... You know, you can you can read them if you want, but I think they're pretty fun, so I, I like reading them. Okay, let's land. Stay there, Donga. All right, here we are on Neptune uh, with some very uh, not okay looking cows. And uh, right off the bat, we have a lever, so we might as well pull it. All right, well, we should see what's in the room. Uh, but there's nothing really here, except for this non-interactable red bar thing. So, hmm, okay. Well, we have another lever, so, uh... Let's pull that one. Uh, well that raised the bar thing, but it still doesn't seem like we can do anything in here, so, um... I don't know. We'll move on. Ladder. Shall we go up? So one of my favorite things about this game is the level of detail put into these animations. Um, it's it's the kind of stuff that you you don't get with pixel art games that are just doing pixel art for the sake of pixel art. Like, there's actually, you know, nice nice shadows and really nice sprite work. So that's a huge selling point to this game for me. I just love uh, Jamie's artwork. And uh, we have a, a door here, but it doesn't look like we can reach it. <coughs> yeah, poor Lenny. Yeah, so you, you can't really you can't really die in this game. Uh, you can you can definitely slap Lenny around though a lot. <laughs> okay, so that obviously uh, must have closed the door that or lowered the floor that was there. Um, but there's a way down here, so uh, let's try going down. Well, it's just an empty room. And, uh, nothing that we can click on. Clicking on this door does nothing, so... I guess that's that. Now see, if you're a- if you're a normal gamer, you're angry at right, me right now for not being more thorough, but... That's where you can you can try the game to see what happens, right? So I'm I'm not gonna be more thorough. You can be more thorough, right? Um, yeah. So uh, let's head back up here because I bet that we changed something up there. If anybody's in chat watching, uh, say hi. All 
Alright, so we did open this up. So now we can get in here. And there's a suspicious hole in the floor in this room. But this lever doesn't do anything. Hmm. So I guess that's that for here. That's another click point that I bet uh, a lot of people, a lot of players don't know about. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that in this game, which is just like hidden details that you, you're unlikely to notice on your first playthrough. Like, uh, I didn't know that you could fall down there until one time, you know, I was playing the game and I found out that you could, right? So yeah, I love stuff like that. Um, adds a lot of replay value. And obviously there is more here, but I'm just leaving because I don't want to slow show this thing. Okay, um, so we're getting to that point where I'm, uh, I have a few, I have a few more features that I want to show off, but then after that I'm going to, uh, go to Pluto and I'm actually going to solve it to show what that looks like. Um, but first, before I do that, um, so the first thing I wanted to show, I actually have another instance of this game running because I wanted to show what happens when you do find the bomb. So here's um, a planet where I have actually found the bomb already. And you can see there it is, and I can click on it. So let's see what happens, right? Ah, this is a thing that some players might not remember if they've played this game before. <laughs> so, this game has these puzzles when you find the bomb where you have to disarm them. Like this. And, you know, so the idea, right, is you just you have to turn all of the, the red lights to green. Whenever you click on them, it, it does some certain pattern and you kind of have to figure out what the pattern is in order to turn the red lights to green. And you can reset it. Um, this is not everybody's gem, and a lot of people found this... Oh, okay, uh, right. Okay, I'm informed that the chat was disabled at the start, so that's why I wasn't seeing any chat messages. That's fine. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, but, okay, all right. Uh, that has been fixed now, so now you should be able to see the chat. All right. <laughs> So that, that's why I wasn't seeing any chat messages. I was worried that just nobody tuned in, but... Uh, no, there are people watching. Okay, good, good. Um, I guess Ezone had to had to go in and disable that, or had to go in and enable that. So, yes, hi everybody who is now finally joining the chat because, it was, because it's enabled now. Uh, sorry about that little uh, technical difficulty. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we have these puzzles, and... Not everybody likes these puzzles, uh, and people complain that these are annoying. So once again, this is something that was in the original release of the game, but it was removed in later versions because people didn't like it. Uh, but in this version of the game, uh, it is here, but you can turn it on and off, right? So if you don't want to solve this, then uh, you can just press Control plus B, and I, it informs you the bombs have been turned off, and now the bomb's disarmed. Yay! So, that's a new feature in this game, right? Uh, like, in this Steam release of the game, that's a new uh, thing that didn't exist before. You can toggle that on and off. Um, so that's cool. Uh, now, there is one other thing that I wanted to show, um, but in order to do it, I'm going to have to restart the game because it requires editing my save file. Uh, so I'll show that one second. So, just put this in here. Okay. Well, here we are back on the title screen. Now, 
Uh, what I've just done is I've actually edited it so that the, you can see the countdown starts at two minutes. Because uh, what I want to show is the bad ending. So as, it, which is not really a spoiler, by the way, it'll become apparent why in a second. This is not, this is not a spoiler, right? Um, so <laughs> this, um, as, as was mentioned back at the start, this game has a countdown timer from, from four hours. Um, so if you don't solve the game in four hours, uh, then you get the bad ending. However, there's a few reasons uh, that I think most players never see the bad ending. The first reason is that the countdown timer isn't always rolling. Like, there are a lot of uh, places where the countdown timer isn't actually counting down. Uh, for example, uh, during the whole intro sequence, the timer isn't counting down. Uh, during uh, when, when you're like reading the, the planet information, like the text on the loading screen, it's not counting down during that. It's not counting down while you're, you're flying around space. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of places where that countdown timer, it says that you, know, you have a four hour time limit, but it's a little bit more than that because it's not counting down all the time. Um, the second uh, thing is, um, the, the second reason is that the the four hour time limit uh, is fairly reasonable. Like for for a playthrough of this game, uh, it's it's pretty reasonable that you can complete the game uh, in, in four hours if you're if you're going through it fast, right? If you're if you're not stopping to to smell the roasts and look for all the hidden click points. So um, I imagine that a lot of players have never actually seen the bad ending. But the bad ending, as you'll see, it's it's not actually very much of a bad ending. So, once again, this is this is not a spoiler, right? It's just a cool little detail. I'll show it off. So if we just land on Earth here, eh. land. All right, and now if we go over to the master bomb here. So yeah, this is this is about the extent of the, uh, the new features in the game. You can, it, it's obviously the biggest and to me the most important one. It's just that it fills the entire screen. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at the master bomb because the, the timer is visible here. The most important feature to me is just that it fills the entire screen, right? Um, but also you can you can hit Control plus J to turn the jetpack on and off. You can press Control plus B to turn the bombs on and off. And those are new features in the Steam version. You won't find them anywhere else, right? Um, the version uh, that is on Ezone's website right now just has those things disabled because people found them annoying. But in this version, it's toggleable, which is really nice. Uh, so that's cool. <coughs> so yeah, after this, uh, I'll be going to, to Pluto to solve that. Uh, so I'll talk about that in a, in a second. But yeah, I just really love this game. Um, if there were ever any game that was like, um, representative of early web games, then this would be it. This is sort of like what I consider, Lenny Lushux is sort of what I consider like the mascot of early web games. Because um, a lot of people talk about like the 2005, 2006 Newgrounds era of like Flash games, but I kind of like this era where it's like uh, developers like Ezone and Skyworks and Adveractive who were trailblazing what web games uh, should even be like, right? Uh, it was an exciting time for for uh, web games online. Alright, let's watch. About half a minute ago on Planet Sluggy. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me, let me guess. Lenny has disarmed another palm, right? No, on the contrary, sire. Lenny's four hours are nearly all up. He has about 20 seconds left. Excellent, finally. Victory is ours. Quick, I want to see the explosion. Put it on screen.
Well, well, where's the boom? Why aren't I seeing an explosion? Huh? Why? Uh, um... Ah, I believe I can explain, sire. It appears that our computers are a bit affected by the year 3000 bug. What? The year 3000 bug? You are competent fools. So, where does that leave us now? Well, sire, I'm afraid that Master Bomb's timer will be automatically set back to four hours and counting. Do you mean to tell me that Lenny is getting another four hours to disarm the rest of the bombs? Well, uh, um, that is to say, yes, sire. Idiots! Well, don't just stand there with gooshy green globs of gooshbog. Get back to work! Yes, sire. Right away, sire. And then we just spawn back in. I just love this, because it's like, it's so obvious that they, they wanted to add the four-hour time limit just to, um, like, have a story motivation for you to, to go quickly. But, <laughs> but it's like, um... But, like, they also didn't want to actually have a four-hour time limit on the game because it would be really unfair to just remove all of your progress and make it so that you can't complete the game. So they just didn't have, like, they just put a bad ending that is basically just a non-ending that resets the timer. It's great. I love it. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, quote-unquote bad ending. Uh, and I imagine that a lot of players haven't even seen it, but... Uh, you can see why um, it, I don't really consider it a spoiler, because nothing much of substance happens. Although you do get to, to see another character that isn't doesn't make an appearance anywhere else in the game, so that's kind of neat. It's almost like it's an easter egg. I mean, I don't know if it qualifies as an easter egg, because... Come on, Donga! It's like... It's mentioned that it's something that can happen. It's, it's mentioned as something that can happen, but... Yeah. It's 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 still something the majority of players probably haven't seen. Oh yeah, so this um this cutscene always plays if you leave Earth. Even if it doesn't really make sense because they should already know that Lenny Lou shots is in space. I was aware of this while testing the game. Like, I was aware that this always plays and it doesn't make much sense. But I figured that probably the reason players would return to Earth during their gameplay is if they wanted to see that cutscene again, so I just left it in. Um... Hi, look, Donga! Nice! So, yeah. Now I'm going to go to Pluto. So... Hi, look, Donga! This is the part of the stream where I'm actually going to solve Pluto. Uh, so I'm actually going to show all the puzzle solutions for Pluto. Uh, now, Pluto is the part of the game that's in the free demo. So if you want to try this part out for yourself, there's a free demo. Uh, it's on Steam right now. You can download it and try it out uh, for yourself. Uh, or you can watch me do it. Or if you're, if you're already sold on the game by now, uh, then you can just add the game to your wish list. It comes out on November 2nd, and then you can tune out. Hi, look, Donga. Pluto! All right, so here is the planet of Pluto, and this is your last warning. I'm actually going to solve this puzzle. Uh, so, yeah. Pluto! Here we go. Prepare yourself for a cool adventure on the cold, harsh confines of Pluto. Have you ever sat naked in a tub full of blueberry ice cream during a hailstorm. Do you think that's cold? Well, you don't know the meaning of the word until you visit the frozen planet of Pluto. In fact, back in the early 21st century, Pluto's status was downgraded from that of a planet to the status of a very large ice cube. Later, in 2089, its planet status was reinstated once again so that our solar system could qualify as legal legal contender and thus compete in the Systems of Nine Planets Intergalactic Games. So that's another story. Uh, I, just a quick note, I find this paragraph interesting because in the year 2000, uh, I think they were talking about uh, like downgrading Pluto from being a planet, but it wasn't like officially yet. Like that wasn't until I think 2006, because uh, I remember looking that up. Um, so they kind of predicted this. They kind of called it. Um, but I'm guessing that Ezone probably like saw in the news that they were considering downgrading Pluto from being a planet, uh, and that they aren't just psychics. 
Uh, but I do find that to be a, a pretty funny detail, because uh, this game came out before that actually officially happened. Um, in the year 2401, there was a massive ice shortage throughout our solar system. Global warming on Earth had melted the polar caps, and humankind had to look elsewhere for a pure source of ice. It was soon discovered that Pluto was largely made up of beautiful, crystal clear ice. Pluto was immediately colonized by a team of ice miners. The Pluto Ice Company went bankrupt when... Oh, um... I skipped, I skipped text, oops. Pluto was immediately colonized by a team of ice miners. After many fruitful years of ice mining, our galaxy had enough ice to last a million years. Due to the lack of demand for ice, the Pluto Ice Company had the brilliant idea of putting all their hard-earned profits into setting up Pluto as a galactic summer vacation spot. Once again, let me remind you that Pluto is a bloomin' cold place. The Pluto Ice Company went bankrupt when not even one tourist came to the opening. The planet closed down and has been deserted ever since. That is, until now. The sluggy aliens have now converted the old ice mine tunnels into a hideout for a bomb. You must navigate your way through the uncharted labyrinth of Pluto's underground to find the bomb, disarm it, and return to your ship. Hurry, time is running out. The mission is not going to be easy. Make sure you wear your thermal, battery-operated self-heating jocks. Unfortunately, due to the explosive chemical makeup of the atmosphere, your jetpack is inoperative. You must do this one for good luck, Lane. Alright, and here we are on Pluto. Stay there, Donga. So, um, I think this would be a good point to talk about the game that this uh, Steam release is uh, raising money for, which is Lenny 3, and just talk about some of my uh, hopes and wishes for that game. Because uh, I'm not working on that game, right? I'm just a, I'm just a huge fan of Ezone, and I, I've worked together with them uh, on this uh, Steam release. But uh, I haven't... I'm not actually, like, working on it. Anymore. So, I kind of just wanted to talk about things that I'm hoping to see in the third game. So, a lot of the reason why I like Lenny Loose Jocks in Space is just because of the, the storytelling in this game. The storytelling and humor. Um, Izuna has a very particular uh, brand of humor that I really like. And, uh... That, so I'm kind of hoping to see that again in uh, Lenny 3. And I, I, from the pro material that we've seen, uh, it does seem to be, you know, basically headed in that direction. It does seem to be um, taking the Lenny Loose Jocks in Space formula. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing I want. I, I hope that it has a lot of, like, dialogue and character moments. Because uh, something about Lenny in space is that space is kind of lonely. You are kind of by yourself the entire time. Uh, there are, like, aliens in the game, but you don't really have dialogue with them or anything. Um, it would be kind of cool if there was, like, moments in the new game where you have to, like, actually talk to characters, but I don't know. Um, second thing I'm kind of hoping for, I kind of hope that they make more use of uh, Donga, uh, Lenny's pet dog. Um, you do control Donga when you're walking around on Earth, uh, but that's basically the only time that you uh, that you that you control Donga, uh, and he does do something important towards the end of the game, which I won't spoil. But that's basically it. That's basically, other than that, he's just there for emotional support. So it would be cool if there's like a part of the third game where like you have to maybe like Lenny is trapped and you have to use Donga to do something, or maybe like you get separated somehow, uh, and so this you have to control Donga and then Lenny is somewhere else. So you have to control both of them or something like that. Just uh, just to make Donga more useful. I don't know. Um, so that's, like, my second wish. Um, my, my third wish for the, the third game is just that they reference characters from, from Lenny Walkabout. Um, specifically Mr. Macaroni, because he's my favorite character in Lenny Walkabout, and that's his only appearance. Well, maybe favorite second to Lenny himself, but... 
Uh, I just think that, uh... I just think that Mr. Macaroni is, uh, such a funny character. And also that he would be an, a good character to, like, develop to give, like, a backstory for why he's coming I feel like, I feel like he could develop his character to, like, give him a reason why he's always grumpy, uh, in the first game. And I also think, uh, that, uh, for lack of a better comparison, he would make, like, a good, uh, Sans, like, character, like, Sans from Undertale, where he knows that there are time-related shenanigans, like, time travel shenanigans going on, but he doesn't, like, ever let on that he knows. So, yeah, maybe he could, like, make an appearance in his, his like, younger years in the third game. And then, like, that could give him a backstory for why he knows uh, about time travel going on and also, like, why he's so grumpy at everything all the time. So that's my third wish. Also, um, it would be cool if they referenced a Norm Kablooey in any capacity, which is like, just like, in the first game, he's just like a throwaway joke, so it'd be cool if they, like, subverted the expectation that he's a throwaway joke and just turned him into an actual character in the third game. That would be kind of neat. I don't know how far along the third game is, so I don't know if the story is basically locked already, but those are some things that I think would be neat if they happened in the third game. Obviously, I know that if they reference Walkabout, there's kind of a fine line they have to walk because not everybody has, has played the first game. Like, a lot of people have just played Lenny in Space without ever playing the first game in the series. So, they kind of, they'd have to make it so it, like, still makes sense in the context of just meeting the character for the first time. Also, um, okay, this is my fourth wish. I hope they reference the golden statue, like the golden Lenny statue. I hope they give us some explanation for why it's there. Because in this game, it's just a mystery. It's never really explained. And the hint guide makes it like it's an intentional mystery. This bomb can be solved in forklift. <laughs> it's the easiest bomb in the entire game. Yay! All right. So, um, so yeah, this is that's Pluto basically. Uh, you saw the solution, right? The water had to be the 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 furnace had to be turned off so that the water would be frozen because it's Pluto because it's cold, so that we could walk across it. That's the solution to this planet. Um. Can't go back this way because the elevator's in the way. Uh, so yeah, I mean, then I'll, I'll just wrap up Pluto, uh, and um, that's basically it for this stream. So hopefully, this gave you a good idea of what the gameplay in. Lenny Loose Shocks in Space is like, and if this is the type of game that you would like, right? Just a, it's a cool puzzle game. Um, I really like the, the artwork, the sound design is, is cool. Um, and yeah, it's just a really nice um, reminder uh -huh. of what early web games were like. Uh, but see, now we can't walk through the waterfall because it's frozen, so we have to turn the furnace back on. Yeah, it's like I was saying, uh, I kind of like this this era of web games. Uh, I always stuck to like, I never really use Newgrounds that much. I kind of just always stuck to, to Miniclip and, and Shockwave.com and those sites. Um, so this is kind of more my experience with web games. Um, I actually remember how I first heard about Zone. It was through a website called primarygames.com, which still exists. Um, 
and I had I learned about primary games from school because it has like math games on it. Um, but also, it had like more arcade games too, and those are the ones everybody wanted to play. Uh, so our teacher told us about this site, and everybody went to it, but nobody actually played the math games. Uh, everybody just wanted to play the the E Zone and Cool Box games that were on there. Uh, and that's how I learned about EZone.com. That was my introduction to this game. So that's you know quite the quite the butterfly effect there. If I hadn't known about uh, primary games, actually, if I hadn't known about primary games, I'd still know about Ezone because I, I still played the uh, the 3D Groove games, so that's still something that I knew about completely separately. But I didn't even know that Ezone made some of the 3D Groove games until later. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's Pluto. So hopefully, you know, if you're a new player who hasn't played this game before, that gave you a good idea of what this game is like. If you're a returning player, hopefully you learned from this stream something that you didn't know about the game. Sorry, Sire, but Lenny has de deactivated the bomb on Pluto. Slodgy Wawa. I knew we should have made that Pluto bomb, bomb harder to disarm. Slodgy Wawa. Alright, so, yeah, that's basically the game. Um, so I've shown off, you know, basically all the stuff I wanted to show off. So, um... I'm going to be ending the stream now. Thanks everybody for coming and, and tuning in and uh, using the chat while it was actually active. Uh, sorry that it, that it wasn't active the whole time. I was asking people to use it. It wasn't, it wasn't actually enabled. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, for anybody who did use it, thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, and uh, happy Thanksgiving from uh, from Canada because it's, it's Thanksgiving in Canada right now. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody for uh, tuning in, and I mean, I don't know if there. I would say to see you next time, hey, but look, I, I don't know if there's gonna be a next time, because, like, I don't really stream very often. Uh, I pretty much just go on... I, I've used Twitch, like, a couple of times, but basically only just to show friends what I was doing a game because they wanted to watch, and that's basically the extent of my uh, streaming career. I do have a YouTube, but I'm just i'm so rarely in the mood to record stuff these days uh but yeah um I'll, i guess i'll see you next time if i do ever post anything on youtube and uh thanks everybody for coming to the stream all right and uh that's a wrap all right bye bye